Hey guys, so in this video I want to show you a cool extension that you can use to help you when debugging your Flask apps. And the name of this extension is called Flask Debug Toolbar. So I'll get right into demonstrating how this works and um, I think you'll find it useful when you're developing your Flask apps. So the first thing you need to do is install a pip, uh, a pip package. So pip install flask debug toolbar. I've already installed it, so I'm not going to install it again, but that's the command you would run to install the debug toolbar package. So once that's installed, you'll have to set it up in flask and it's really, really simple. So let me create a flask app first. So for this to work, you have to declare debug mode on before you actually uh, add the toolbar to the app. So that's why I'm not putting debug equals true here in the app run. I'll put it somewhere else, which I'll demonstrate in a second. And uh, how this works is it creates a toolbar, like a visual toolbar, and it injects it into your Jinja template. So the only way you can use this is if you're using Jinja templates. So I'll uh, include render template as well. So on my route, which will just be the index, I'll return render template of index.html. And then my flask code is going to, or my template code will be HTML head title debug and then I'll just put one header tag inside of the body and that's it so let me just run this to make sure it works I haven't actually done anything with debug toolbar yet debug.py okay so if I refresh this I have this page and it says debug toolbar just like I expected not very interesting so now let me deal with the uh, debug toolbar extension. So to use it, the very first thing I need to do is import it. So it's from flask underscore debug toolbar. And then I'm going to import something called debug toolbar extension. Probably too long of a name for a class inside of an extension, but this is what they named it. So debug toolbar extension with that casing, uppercase D, uppercase T, and uppercase E. And then I need to set a couple of configuration values. So like I said, debug mode needs to be on. So app.debug equals true. And I need to declare this debug true before I actually instantiate the toolbar. So I have debug true and then the other configuration value that I need is a secret key. And of course, the secret key doesn't matter as long as it's a secret. Okay, so I have those two configuration values. Now all I need to do is instantiate the toolbar. So I'll call this toolbar, and it's going to equal debug toolbar extension, and you have to pass in the app. And then that's it. So once you instantiate the debug toolbar, uh, the toolbar will automatically get injected into any template that you have uh, returned as a response. So with that, let me refresh the page and we should be able to see the toolbar. So I refreshed, let me make sure it's running. Whoops, because I didn't see the toolbar. So refresh, okay, so here we go. The toolbar has now appeared. We see this FDT on the right hand side. So let me show that. And with the Flask Debug Toolbar, it shows you a bunch of useful things that you may need when you're debugging. So the very first thing is versions. It tells me what version my Flask is, 0.10.1. And then also of all the other Flask extensions that I've uh, loaded. And then it has time. So how long did it take to generate this page? Uh, the headers for the page, so we see um, it was a git server name is 121 or 127.0.01 
uh, where it came from. Uh, then we have request variables. So for this particular request, I didn't request anything, just the index page. Uh, any cookies that were sent along with the request, along with any session variables, get variables and post variables. Variables. So you can see how this is pretty useful. Uh, you don't have to look inside of your debugger in your console or your browser's developer tools. You can just use this toolbar. Config all the current config values for Flask. Templates tells you about what Jinja templates you're using. SQL Alchemy will give you the results of any queries that were run in the request. Uh, logging, any logging that you have set up. And route list. Uh, any of the routes that were used in the call and then a profiler if you want to check how long something takes so this is very cool stuff it's very useful if you uh, are debugging your app and uh, if it's in your way you can simply hide it and you'll have the option to open it back up over here on the right hand side so that's it I just want to show you how to get debug toolbar extension working or flask debug toolbar uh, it's really easy to use and you shouldn't have any problems with it. So if you have any questions, just uh, leave a comment down below and I'll answer it. I'll also put the link to the docs for Debug Toolbar in the description below. It has some other configuration values that you can set that you may or may not be interested in. And then uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.